G'day guys, welcome back to Sunset City. Today we need to improve the connection between Sunset City and our little resort town that we've been working on. It's, uh, I mean, it's a very popular place and people are struggling to get down here. There's only one road in and it's a pretty average road and there's zero public transport options. So we are gonna be improving the road, but then also adding in some public transport that, oh man, this thing turns out super nice. There's also a bunch of things going on in downtown Sunset City that I want to show you and also build something that I've been wanting to build for quite some time now. So first up, the name of this town is now Santa Olia instead of San Olia. Uh, basically, that is grammatically correct in terms of the Spanish language. At least I hope so. According to you guys, that's uh, better. So thank you everyone for getting in touch. And then also, we were having this really annoying problem with the surface of the ground that was basically every time I placed down a decal, this uh, surface that was popping up were well, basically disappearing. It was so annoying, it was driving me nuts. I didn't know what to do, but you guys thankfully did. And it's basically within my hide it setting. So I'm using the hide it mod. And if I scroll down to this section down here, this ruining section, and selecting the props, so basically disabling the fact that you can get that ruined texture every time you place down a prop, and then hitting this button, which then, it took about four or so minutes for the whole map to update. And then in terms of the things I've been doing off camera, so I've just been going through and adding in some little bits of detail here and there, just adding some extra bits and pieces to our construction site, and I've also added in a bit of wildlife. So see these little pelicans that are sitting on top of this uh, this little office here? I've got a couple more that are just, you know, just dotted around all over the place. They look so cool, they add so much. Uh, basically, this is all part of this pack that Sven Berlin has created. And there's a bunch of different bird wildlife and there's also some other wildlife that you're gonna see in a second. But uh, I've just been going through and adding that into different locations, uh, including See these little guys? There's little, uh, these little, little fishies just floating around. So I believe that's also made by Sven Berlin. Sorry, pardon me. This has been made by STM Santana. I don't know if they're trees or if they're props. Yeah, they're props. And you place them down, you can raise them and lower them. And I've just placed a whole bunch of them just sitting underneath some of these areas, mostly around these boats, which is where you typically find these fish. You know, it's the sort of little detail they don't really place everywhere, but uh, they do look great when you do place them down. I'm actually gonna grab a couple of them and I'm gonna put them into other locations like there. They're kind of hard to see, but I think they're kind of nice when you know they are there. Yeah, they look amazing. And I might even just zoom in a little bit closer so you can see them. Just little bits of detail. I don't know, I kind of like that sort of stuff. Uh, so we've got little uh, little fishes in there. Um, but I've also gone through and I've also added in, uh, let's see if you can see these guys. Yeah, there they are. So I've put in these shark props. Uh, these are animated sharks that are floating around this uh, little reef that I created. I want to do a couple more of these little reefs. Uh, they just look great. So I've just plopped them in there. I believe they are also made by Sven Berlin. These guys are circling each other, but man, they look so sweet. Uh, and then I've also gone through and I've just uh, put in this boat ramp, which I wanted to do in the last episode, but didn't have that prop. So I've gone through and added that boat ramp in. And what I will do is I've got these little park life service blocks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place one of them somewhere hidden amongst this area because I want this boat ramp to be adding some sort of uh, park value to this area. Not a huge one, but just something. You know, this is the sort of place where people will come and visit. So I feel like it's realistic if I place something like that down and I can actually just sink it into the ground. I might even sink it into something like there. And that way people are gonna come and visit this area. It's gonna be adding value to this spot and I think it's gonna look great uh, and also function great. And then someone mentioned that it'll be kind of cool to see some little uh, little alligators just sitting amongst this uh, swampy part of the map. And I totally agree. So I've gone in and added in some little alligators just uh, sitting amongst the reeds here. And I've just been putting in a bit of detail into this part, uh, which I think looks super nice. And also adding in this uh, little Jeep here. Well, I mean, this is part of the maintenance for our parks. So you will actually see these driving around and um, I don't really know what you're doing around here, mate. Uh, but basically, yeah, you can actually see these driving around the city and um, 
taking care of the parks within our map. So what I want to do is I think that in order to add a bit more realism to this part or a little bit more of a story, I think if this guy has collected this alligator from this area, you know, just moving him along, let's add in a little path to show that he's actually been in there. So I've got this rural road by Ronix and I'm going to, I don't even know if I'm going to connect it up. Let's see what it looks like if I do actually connect it. Uh, I don't really want that rampy there. So instead, I'm going to drag it all through here. And it's going to kind of go through that way. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that intersection that it makes. Uh, then I'm going to drag it through parts where the reeds are not. So going through all this muddy area and then into this, uh, into this real wet spot, you know, this little spot there. These are little spots here. They are also made by Ronix. These are uh, decals and I've just placed them down and I've got these muddy decals too. So this looks pretty nice. See how it all kind of curves in. You can see where people have been driving around. Man, that adds so much and that looks super cool. And I hate to place it, but it just adds just that little bit of uh, realism, you know, just a bit of rubbish creeping into this, uh, this swampy nature part. It's a bit of a shame, but I mean, you do see this. You see this right next to places like this. You see it definitely near industry. You know, people come in, they drag their, their crap in here and they drop it off and they, you know, they litter these parts. It's kind of what happens. So I feel like you need to place some of that around. And then because we've got this road, I'm not going to connect it up because it just adds that weird intersection. I mean, it's not a problem, but I just don't think we've got a proper intersection. With a road like this, this is definitely not the sort of road that you see the common man driving on. So I'm just going to drag it a little, a little bit closer to my network and then I'm going to drop it using move it. And that way it's hidden into there. Might need to move some of those trees. And I'm really questioning what's going on down here. Quite a lot of you have been suggesting that I upgrade this road so that we can handle traffic a little bit better than uh, this main road is currently handling. I know that we've just got the one lane here and the double lane on this side, but I, I have to be honest, I kind of like the way it looks. I really love the way that the road aligns up to uh, this lane down here and then it opens up when we actually have the shops on this side. Uh, I think this kind of shows it a lot better. I really love that. It looks uh, pretty cool. So I think I'm going to keep it. I would prefer to have some sort of median in the middle, but uh, you know, this is obviously a lower capacity road and then anything like this actually just makes it super wide. And this is not a big place. So having a big road like that actually kind of ruins the scale. I talk about scale quite a lot in my cities, but everything is scaled down so that we can fit in, you know, obviously a place like this, multiple islands, you know, this whole city, this whole everything. This is actually a pretty small place, but it's kind of representing something a little bit bigger than, you know, these islands really look in Florida. So I'm probably going to keep it the way it is, unless you guys can suggest a better road that I could potentially be using. But what I will change is people are suggesting that I do change this access here that, you know, people should just be able to drive all the way through. And you know what? I think you're probably right. But what I think I'm going to do is because I don't think that people turning left into this road, you know, basically if someone's going to be turning left and someone's already driving along here, then there's going to be a high chance of a collision. So I think we're going to need some sort of dedicated turning lane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find, yeah, the same road as this one. And hopefully, let's put it on pause. And, ah, oh, look at that straight away. Okay, starting to get a little bit deep into this. Uh, no controller, uh, intersection marking tool, traffic president mode, and you know, I'm sort of like halfway through it and I have to admit, you know, things are starting to look a lot better. Things are functioning a lot better, but I think I'm starting to lose a little bit of the charm of this place being a bit more remote, a bit more off the beaten track and it's starting to look a little bit too nice, I think. So I'm going to remove some things. I think the traffic lights work. 
but I was about to make a, uh, you know, little, little spot in here, uh, make it all look super pretty and, uh, you know, well looked after, but I actually don't think we need that. So I'm going to get rid of this filler and even some of these lines. I think they're, they're too nice. I think I'll keep this line here because I think it is necessary, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade it a bit. Uh, because I don't want this place to be a super well looked after area. You know, this part of uh, of Sunset City, of the whole map, is a bit more off the beaten track. It is a bit more wild, and intersections are just a little bit more, uh, you know, you gotta take a, take a bit more care. It's a bit more, It's you're not driving in the city anymore, you know? These guys are on holidays. Sometimes when you leave the city, things get a little bit, uh, a little bit more hectic. So, well, maybe more relaxed, not hectic. I think a couple of damaged decals and I'm going to put one right there, which is, uh, I feel like one of those, you know, you kind of like leave the highway and then you hit this road and go like, blah, 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 you know, you know, those little spots. I literally just finished a road trip and you hit areas and you go like, okay, we're not on the highway anymore. Using move it, I'm going to sink this into the ground a little bit using page down so that it's not so pronounced. You know, it's a bit rough around here, but it's not that rough. We'll do the same treatment with these ones. And then these are also excellent. Particularly on well-used roads, you know, this is a very well-used road. So we do need a little bit of this. Particularly when you get people at high speeds or slowing down in certain areas. So people are uh, braking for these lights. You know, you're going to get lots of this sort of stuff. So even sinking it into the ground a little bit more just because they are quite pronounced. And that's pretty cool. There we go. I really like that. I love just seeing little bits like that, especially where you would imagine seeing a bit more wear and tear on the road. Uh, that is exactly where you'd see it. And then I love that, you know, as soon as you kind of pull into this area, yeah, we've got some really nice resorts around here, but you know, deep down, this area is a little bit more rough around the edges and you're going to have little spots that are going to look like that. Now, there are still a lot of people traveling into Santa Julia and they're only able to access it via this road connection. Uh, later down the track, though, we are going to add a train stop because people do want to see that, whether or not it stops here or whether it, uh, you know, stops at the other island up there then uh, that'll be access for them as well. But there is also going to be a bus network, which we'll do later on down the track. But for now, I'm going to be adding in something that a lot of people were suggesting as well. And that is a ferry service, which is going to operate from Santa Julia uh, heading into Sunset City. So it's going to be a pretty big journey. So let's work on that one. Now, as far as I can tell, and as far as people have told me, there isn't a ferry service in the Florida Keys. So we are taking a little bit of creative liberty here, which is totally fine. But I think I'm going to just disguise my ferry service as a whale watching service uh, you know a bit of a tourist trip into these areas even though probably whales don't really make their way into these areas uh, maybe it's more for dolphin watching or some sort of tourist trip uh, but basically it's going to be transporting people from Sunset City to our island and I think we're going to place it into here because I would like there to be some ports and some uh, wharves in this area so this is going to be the very first one and I right, can we just start dragging out a couple of these roads and seeing what sort of things we can make. Let's pause it up and I'm going to start with a road like that and I think it's going to only travel for about that long and then we'll get into some of these types of roads. Things can be easier to keep it on pause, drag out a couple of networks and then we can unpause it when uh, we're ready for the great flood to begin. So I've just gone from thinking that this was just okay to really loving it. 
Uh, there's a couple of things that I've just done. I mean, something that I just did kind of randomly. It was a bit of an accident, but I got the sand color and I, uh, well, sand color, sand resource, uh, and then kind of just accidentally dropped it there. Really, uh, kind of like a big, big blob of it. And what it's done, it's kind of repelled from this area here. I think this is where, I mean, this is where I have placed those uh, little car parks in there. I'm just going to drag one out. Yeah, see, look, see how it's kind of repelling it? Well, it kind of means that when we do have cars here, uh, and even not having cars there, you can see where the sand is more of a dirt because of people being parked in there, which is kind of cool. And so you get this uh, really interesting texture through uh, these cracks between the network and between the decals and then be between where the actual ruined texture is coming through because of these buildings or these car parks. So that's kind of a bit of an accident, but it worked really well. And then we've got a little bit of a, another boat ramp, which we kind of needed. And I'm going to put some piers in just in a second. And then this is going to be a little ferry terminal, just super small. And I reckon we do keep it as a ferry, but I'm going to make it, I mean, we've got a whole bunch of different boats to choose from. So I might see what sort of uh, boats we can use that will probably look the most realistic. But uh, before I get there, there's this little spot here that I feel like we need something. I think a diner or some sort of restaurant would actually work really well. So I might try that. And I kind of like that already. I can even drag it a little bit closer. And we'll add a little bit more detail on that a bit later on. We'll move that broken fencing to over there. And I might even get rid of that broken fencing. And drag it like that. Both those buildings fit in perfectly with this area. I mean, this has got, I mean, both of them have got a bit of a Caribbean holiday vibe uh, that I think works really well. Uh, and speaking of which, check out this motel that I placed down to. I mean, this is uh, super 70s, fits in really well with Sunset City. I'm probably not going to put any detail on this at the moment because I uh, kind of want to leave these in place, think about them, and then let's work on this one for now. Now we do have a bit of surface popping through, so I'm going to just hide some of that using some uh, just some trees. I'm going to put down some more palm trees that are just going to act as the edge for this area. I uh, kind of like that. And I'm going to do the same for these ones. And then some of these bushes can cover up that. Yeah, and you know what? Even a couple of just massive trees like that are super nice. These are, yeah, these are absolutely brilliant. We've got some weed clusters. Let's see if I get nice and close. I might even put some between some of those cracks. And then just a little tip, but grass makes, not that one, grass makes really good seaweed. Uh, just poking through just a little bit. You know, you can just see it under the water. I love that, especially when it's mixed in with a bit of the sand color that's coming through as well. I'm gonna just pop it in just in little spots, just here and there, just little pockets. Geez, that's starting to look pretty nice. And no one's using our car park at the moment, but I reckon we're going to start seeing people parking all over the place when we start connecting this up. So let's actually connect up our ferry service. Now, I would really like it to follow this whole, uh, you know, this whole waterway. I want it to be a bit of a scenic route. I think the clearance under that bridge is a little low. So that's fine because I don't really want to go underneath that one anyway. I'm going to use the bend to create uh, nice sweeping movements for the ferry, but I do want to be quite direct. I don't want to do like, you know, kind of movements like that because ferries are going to try and take the shortest route, uh, even though we are kind of bypassing that. Uh, so they're going to go through this way and then we've left a bit of a clearing here so that boats can actually travel underneath. Uh, we do have a power pole in the way, so I will remove that, but I will find the largest spot and I'm going to travel through. And then we'll go like that. And then I'm going to move this pole. And I'm even going to raise it up in this part. And I know some people would like to get rid of this completely, this uh, this power line. But I'm going to be honest, I really like it. <laughs> I mean, I don't like seeing that when I'm on a road trip or traveling or even seeing power lines. I think they look super ugly. But I kind of like creating that, uh, you know, that contrast between this beautiful area. We've got these like, you know, waterways, this uh, crystal clear water, these, you know, beautiful islands. And then we've got this kind of ugly power line. It 
I don't know, I find that sort of stuff interesting. Now, I've actually got a bit of a channel going through here. You can actually see a bit of the waterways that I'm going to follow. So it is kind of do these big windy movements, but I'm following the kind of the uh, the deepest parts. Not that the fairies really need it, but I'm going to be following that pattern anyway. I need to improve that bridge a bit more, so I'm just going to go through there for the time being. And then there is, in fact, a fairy line right there. Uh, and I've got a couple of things to show you over there in just a sec, but let's uh, let's actually connect it up. Here come some of the fairies and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at some of the different ones we can choose from because I have grabbed a quite a few uh, to choose from. We've got the shark one, I'll have a look at it a little later on. But we've got this whale watching one, so first of all I'm going to remove how many fairies I want because I think I only want about two. I don't want to see this massively packed. So these down here are our whale watching ones. They uh, look pretty nice. Let's have a look at the other ones we can choose from. Got these river boats. Uh, that's a good one too. Oh man, this is gonna be a little tricky to choose. I kind of like the fact that this is while watching on the side, so that's winning at the moment. <laughs> I've got these little Monaco ones. They're definitely too small. <laughs> Check these guys out. So I've got these guys too. I mean, they look awesome, but not for a fairy. <laughs> got a shark. Uh, I mean, that looks amazing, but probably not. I'm gonna go with these whale watcher boats. I mean, they look great. My only qualm is that they, I don't think you'd probably see whale watching boats traveling uh, through these waterways. You'd probably see them out in the ocean. But for now, I think they look pretty nice. I might have a look at some other ones we could potentially use for this area uh, and see some more boats actually traveling through here because I think that'd be super nice. But uh, while these guys are starting to pick up their passengers, I just wanna show you this uh, park that I made. Uh, I actually made this when I did the tutorial for the City Skylines channel a couple of weeks ago. I built this whole area as part of um, a bit of a showcase and uh, creating these pedestrian districts. And um, you know, this area is looking pretty sweet. I'm gonna show that in a second, but this I actually built as well, but I didn't include it in the video because I had to stick to a time frame and um, also it's not really, it's only using part of the actual DLC. So I kind of just left it out, but this is pretty nice, isn't it? Kind of like this. getting any people using this space and I was a little bit worried and then I realized that I had the pedestrian crosswalks uh, disabled for these roads which meant that people weren't even, weren't even able to access this area so as soon as I enabled that using traffic president then I was able to get people using this space uh, like just like that so super happy with that uh, I've disabled this one. Actually, you know what? I should probably enable it just because people need to come to uh, this motel and they are enabled and we'll work on that a little later on. But I mean, man, this place is becoming very bustling, which is fantastic because it's actually taken a little bit of pressure off our roads, which is excellent uh, because as you can see, it's very busy down here regardless. And it's only going to get better when we add in those other bits and bits of public transport. But I mean, it's starting to really fill out around here. We're getting some awesome, awesome action. Uh, lots of people walking around, people even using this boat ramp too. I've hidden a little service block in there. And you can also see that we are getting some boats popping up and uh, they are going around and cruising around our channels. I've actually got a line all the way through here. You can see some boats just, uh, just going around. I mean, it's looking super nice. But for now, I mean, this area is looking super pretty. I'm really, really happy with that. And I'm glad to see some people finally starting to use it. Uh, actually, a funny little thing, you might have noticed that uh, for some reason, the ferry terminal is a little bit wonky. So I had to like make it wonky just so that the people can actually fit on there properly because before they're in the water. And it's meant that our uh, little ramp that goes onto it is a bit wonky too. So it's got this real wonkiness to it, <laughs> but it's kind of cool, I don't mind it. But with that, Santa Julia is pretty much done. There are little bits and pieces that I want to work on every now and again, but you know, for the most part, I think it's, uh, I'm really liking what it's looking like. Uh, I'm going to put it to you guys and we'll start embedding some of these things. I feel like this resort 
uh, needs a name and I feel like there is a backstory to this place. Uh, there's some really nice little pockets of areas that I love about this spot, uh, particularly this little entrance that we created in the last episode. But I just feel like there's a, there's a story behind this place. I feel like someone owns it and I think there's something that goes on here. You know, it's something, something interesting, a little backstory. So if you want to add something to this, uh, please pop it down in the comment section below. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of accumulating some names and suggestions and some stories. Uh, and I'm going to surprise you with some of those things a little bit later on. So it is time to leave Santa Julia. We're going to head back into Sunset City. It's been a while since we've worked over here. I've actually been doing some bits and pieces off camera and doing some things um, as part of, you know, that tutorial that I showcase on the City Skylines channel and you know what, let's just have a little fly around because it does look super nice down here and there's some things I want to show you uh, you know and just talk about kind of just can we just appreciate the bit of public transport we've got going on you know this uh, monorail this metro mover that flies on top of here and then we've also got these uh, ferries that connect up which um, I was surprisingly super useful ferries aren't that useful in City Skylines but this one seems to be crazy useful. I mean, a lot of people are using it. I, I, I guess a handful of people are using it. A handful of grannies are using it. But something that I didn't really showcase within that video that I did on the City Skylines channel, by the way, you should go and check it out if you haven't seen it, but I have gone through and uh, used procedural objects on these pillars so that they're in better spaces, you know, so we've got this um, big gap between our uh, ocean, our ocean, our river here so that boats can actually pass through and I've gone through and just extended it. You can see the difference in, let's have a look. So, I mean, if you look at this one, how nice and long it is, and then if you look at ones like this that I haven't done that on, you can see like this big base, which looks pretty ugly. Something else that I've been working on that I didn't really talk about in the tutorial was that I have been just changing the skyline quite a lot off camera and just trying to work on how it looks. Just because we had far too many buildings before, we actually had a fairly tall one here and a fairly big one there, and even a couple of other ones that were scattered around, and I just felt like it was getting too crowded, uh, too busy, and too tall as well. And what I really don't want is the skyline kind of getting muddled up, and I still think it is a little bit muddled. It's uh, definitely a lot better. Uh, there's some buildings that I think are permanent, permanent buildings. Uh, this one I do want to be the largest, this one I like, this one I like, and this one I like. But the rest are kind of temporary. I guess this one's alright. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's really, really tricky because there are such nice buildings on the Steam Workshop. But I can't use them just because they are so large in comparison to the rest of the skyline and the rest of the city. But it's actually not that big of a city. Well, it kind of is, but it's also kind of not. So I've got to try to be careful with the types of buildings that I choose. I want this to be the tallest one and I want it to really feel like the tallest one, which is why I'm probably not going to go much taller than this guy here. But I'm still working on it, still trying to choose the right buildings. There's a bunch that are going to disappear. I kind of like this over here, these uh, these condos, which um, I kind of think is kind of nice. I would like to make this bit a bit more of a touristy strip and um, you know maybe even a casino or something kind of interesting around here. But yeah, it's kind of changing. A lot of stuff is, um, you know, being updated and changed <laughs> kind of off camera. And then not to mention, you know, we're trying to build something based in the 80s. And the 80s, uh, you know, Miami in the 80s didn't really have a tall skyline. You know, kind of on the same note of that, you know, because we built this whole uh, walkway here, this whole pedestrian plaza, uh, you know, spaces like this, they weren't hugely common within the 80s. So I kind of like that this is just in this space, but I don't want to, I don't, you know, I was almost about to continue it along here and continue it down to here. No, I think that this is just an isolated space. In the 80s, in the downtown, you'd more likely find industry, you'd find businesses, and you'd find very uh, concreted and very uh, urban areas. Whereas these days, walkable spaces and green space is something that is replacing industry and is replacing a lot of areas that were pretty undesirable. So in that note, with that note, this space here, I kind of think needs to be uh, either something to do with industry or something to do with construction. And it's, uh, you know, this whole space over here, I'm thinking is going to be a pretty industrial space. Uh, just because this area is already full of offices and condos and stuff like that, I kind of want to try and do something a bit different. Plus this interchange is really kind of, you know, it's, it screams industry, you know? I feel like it's going to go over some kind of shady spaces. Uh, so yeah, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> I kind of think we need to do some sort of construction site to kind of show that this space is that uh, kind of next project in Sunset City. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through my different assets that I have in Find It. Um, I'm actually just gonna type in construction and I'm gonna to go to this space over here and I'm gonna place down pretty much everything I have in terms of construction. And that way I can then just copy these things over into our new space, or at least just have a look at the sort of things that we have so that we can see if they're gonna be useful or not. Oh, this is cool. I've even got a couple of construction buildings. Uh, I might even place that down. Oh, and this is kind of like the other half of it. These are gonna be useful. Whoa, <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about. You know, wouldn't it be cool? I mean, how awesome is this? But it's almost the same size of the entire downtown. I've also got a bunch of props like this that I can place down. So adding quite a bit of detail. I'm gonna add in quite a bit of detail to this place, but I think these, these are perfect. I'm gonna use these as my blocks, as my uh, building sites, uh, quite literally. Just to highlight Sven Berlin one more time, this is an awesome animated crane by him. Uh, he hasn't created this crane, but he has made it animated and it rotates and it actually moves along its track, which is super cool. And then we've also got this animated uh, digger down here that is now for some reason mix, uh, missing the pile that I aligned it up to, but that's fine. But it's digging, popping it into the truck. So that's looking pretty nice. And I've just gone through and added some little bits of detail down here. We've got some little uh, benches or little tables for the workers uh, that use the portable offices. And I've just placed down lots of different props just around just to show that this place is under construction. And, um, you know, it's a bit of a work in progress. Uh, something I really like is just getting into the finer details, adding in some of these little weeds, just poking through. I didn't want to do anything too big in terms of trees, so we've just got basically these little bushes that are probably the biggest that we're going to be doing around here because this is uh, obviously completely under construction and uh, whatever was here before was probably something to do with industry and it's being pushed out. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know if that's just by accident, but these guys are all workers <laughs> and they're all work walking through here. I mean, that's so cool. Not this guy, but that's fine. So speaking of which, uh, I've actually got these little markers. If I type in worker, I can actually place down some of these ore forestry or oil workers and these all look like construction workers. So I'm going to place one there. Let's see what the ore industry looks like. I'm pretty sure it's the same as the oil. So I feel like that's the only thing that's missing, uh, workers. And there we go, just a couple of guys inspecting the skip bins down here and kind of just roaming around doing nothing. And with this site now being under construction, I think that this key that stretches along here probably doesn't make any sense. I think it probably needs to end uh, where this overpass is. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to continue this break wall because I think that probably makes more sense in an area like this. But uh, do let me know what you think this construction site is. What are they creating down here? Is it more apartments or are they building something something completely different? Uh, let me know because I want to add it to, uh, well, like I said before. There's a bit of a story behind a lot of the places that we're building and I'm going to be adding these things to a platform a little later on. So do stay tuned for that. But guys, that is it for today's episode. It kind of took a bit of a unexpected turn. I kind of felt like I was going to be working in Sunset City the majority of the time, but that, uh, that ferry line just really got me. I just had too much fun making that. And I'm really happy that it did because I think it's added a lot to this area and it's so super cool to see people actually using it. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for your feedback and uh, all the suggestions and uh, watching today's video. Very much appreciated. Big shout outs to my patrons who are making videos like this possible. Danny Daniel, Benjamin Prinster, Kyle Kohler, Kimbo Jones, Brendan Neverton, Edward Ritchie, Thomas Puckridge, Alexander Nagard, Salmon V, Jeff Strickland, 
Daniel Bush, Simon Ellison, Sherrysville, BLG 393, and Kendrick BC. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I'll catch you in the next one.